Headphones. These are so important. And not just because they make you look like a DJ, um, which they do, by the way. But the other part of this is that they're really useful um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, headphones will allow us to hear what's coming up next. Right? So as the song is playing off the speaker and everybody is partying to that song, in my headphones, I can be listening to the next song and auditioning it, trying to figure out, does this sound good? Will this keep the energy up? Um, is this the same version that I remember? Uh, this will allow you to be a lot more in the moment and in this flow state and fluid while you're performing, which honestly is one of the things that I love most about DJing. And then number two, the headphones are crucial when it comes to manual beat matching. So up until this point, for the most part, we've been using sync as a way of keeping the tracks together, beat matching wise. And I've made this analogy before. This is sort of like using training wheels when you're trying to ride a bike. This allowed us to be much more focused on the music and the song structure and learning how to control the EQ and the volume. But now learning how to manually beat match can be a really important tool that you can put in your skill set. And this oftentimes is sort of a rite of passage. And Hercules has done an amazing job at creating a tool on the deck called beta line. And so we're going to talk a lot more about this here in just a moment. But first, what I want to do is I want to show you how you should set up your headphones. So I'm going to plug in my headphones right here is my headphone jack. Plug that in. Now with my headphones, if you're using over ear headphones, you could do this. You could also use earbuds completely up to you. Um, if you're using over over ear headphones, I want to have one ear in and one ear out. And I guess technically if you're using earbuds, the same thing. Now, something to keep in mind, most of us have some form of Bluetooth headphones these days. I've actually got to have the cord for it, right? I got to be able to plug it in. I can't use this with a set of Bluetooth headphones. So um, if your Bluetooth headphones have the ability to use a cord, just find that cord, make sure to plug it in. The other option uh, when it comes to this, or, or not the other option, but rather the other thing that you don't want is to have noise canceling headphones. I don't want noise canceling headphones because I want to hear what is going on here in the ambient. So a couple of things to rem remember when you're looking for a pair of headphones. One, you want to have headphones that you have a cord on that you can plug in. Two, you don't want noise canceling headphones. Cool. All right. Now that we've got ourselves set up, you might be wondering, you, you see me, I've got my right ear in and my left ear out. This is the way that I always DJ. My right ear is my cue ear. My left ear is out here to listen to what's going on. And I used to actually teach that you are lining up two things that you hear, which is not true. In fact, I'm going to share some really big secrets when it comes to learning how to manually beat match. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, before I give you all of the secrets, let me first show you how the headphones work on the actual controller. So. Do you see on each channel of mine, I've got this little headphone cue. So if I click on it, it turns red. Same thing with that one. So if I'm playing this track, this is playing, I can cue up on this side, have the volume down, and I can play this song, and you all can't hear this. I can hear that in my headphones. You can't hear it out here. Now, my volume for my headphones is right here as well, right? Here's my volume for my headphones right here. And I can also cue the master if I want to. So if I click on this, I'll be able to hear what's actually coming out of the master speaker. This is really helpful if you're trying to DJ late at night at home or something like that and you want to turn on the master. Or maybe you don't have a speaker hooked up and you want to be able to toggle between what's coming out of the master and what's coming out of your headphones as your pre-cue. It's kind of tricky to do without the ability to split it, but it is possible to do it. So uh, typically my process then is if this song is playing, I'm only listening to the next song. I'm not listening to both at the same time. I'm only listening to the song that's coming in. And I'm gonna tell you more of my secrets here in just a moment. Uh, stay tuned. I love this. I love being able to tease you with that. All right, so, so 
this song is playing, I'm cueing this. Now when I switch to this song, now I'm cueing this side, right? And so on and so forth. As I go, I'm just switching and now got that one on, all right? So this is how we're gonna be able to use our cue. I'm going to do a, a mix. You've heard this mix before. This time when I do the mix though, we're also gonna start to incorporate this beat align feature. So when I, I'm gonna DJ without sync. So I'm gonna turn sync off. I'm gonna make the, the, um, the tracks the same BPM and I'm going to use beat align to be able to tell whether I need to speed up or slow down. All right, so let's, let's take a look at that here. I'm gonna queue up Stranger on the right side and I'm gonna put Imagino on the left side. I'm gonna rewind it back to be sort of right before that second hot cue, which is the beginning of the chorus of Stranger, right? So I'm right there, I'm getting ready to mix. On this side, on Imagino, I'm gonna be back to the very, very beginning. I'm gonna be coming in from that one, from the, the very first one of the intro. And I can hear this in my headphones even though you can't hear it out there. All right, here we go. And remember, I'm gonna use my beta line here. All right, there we go. So you can see that I'm using the beta line to help adjust this. I didn't hit sync at all. This is a big step up. I'm not using the sync anymore. I am manually playing this. Now, granted, having this guide is super helpful, but I want you to also be training your ears at the same time. Did you hear what it sounded like when they lined up? Did you hear what it sounded like when they weren't lined up? You need to be able to distinguish the difference and know when do you need to speed up versus when you need to slow down. And that part is tricky. Learning how to manually beat match can be a little bit tricky and I'm ready to give you some of my secrets to help you manual beat match. So the tempo range can be changed inside of the software. So right now this is set to plus six and minus six, so that's the range. So if I go down, Negative 6% is 97.76. And I get back to the middle, it's exactly 104. Then I go up 6%, it's 110.24. So this is my tempo range, it's plus or minus six. Now, I can change this as well. So if I click on this, I can change it and toggle between it. So all I'm doing is I'm hovering over it and, and hitting click. So you can see there's so many different ranges here. Let's do, I mean, let's have fun with it. Let's go to 100. Here we go. Listen to what this sounds like. And all the way to zero. Wow. So 100 is probably way too big, right? In fact, actually, the smaller the tempo range, sort of the better in my opinion. Um, now, there are other reasons why you would want to use a wider tempo range. You might want to use a wider tempo range as a transition technique, which we can get into later. Um, but for the most part, I want to sort of stay within this six, because look, this is going to give us our same, you know, this is more than enough in terms of that plus or minus four BPM, right? It's getting me all the way down to 97 even. That's really s stretching how far we were talking about with BPM. Um, also, one other thing I want to point out is when I'm here, if I get to the middle and the green light goes on, that's when I am in the actual position of the original tempo. Now, along with the beta line, I can also use this to be able to tell when I need to speed up or slow down the song. So if for some reason I'm mixing and these two tracks aren't the same tempo, I can use this to change the tempo and telling me where I need to be. So I'm going to change this tempo. I'm going to make this tempo, whatever, 98 beats per minute, 98 and something, right? Or 90, yeah, sure, 99.83, something like that, all right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this song. Now you'll see over here, it's showing me which direction I need to go to get it to the right tempo. Up, too far. It's 
saying that's where I need to be. And that's exactly right. That's the right tempo that I was at. Okay, I've got some secrets for you who are out there who want to learn how to manual beat match or how to, how to get better with manual beat matching. How about that? So let's first talk about why manual beat matching is important. It's fun, first of all. Second of all, you're a lot more in control of what's happening. So for any of you who are out there who've ever learned how to drive a stick shift versus just driving an, an automatic car, you, you know that it's much more fun to drive stick, right? It's much more fun to drive manual unless you're sitting in traffic on the freeway. Then that's not so fun. But at least knowing how to do it opens up a lot more possibilities. For instance, what if you want to be DJing on vinyl records? Well, there is no sync button on vinyl. Or, you know, this is just something that you've always wanted to learn. Or there's a lot of DJs that, you know, uh, talk a lot of, you know, just mess about like, oh, you're not a real DJ unless you know how to manual beat match. Well, after this video, hopefully you'll have some tips to help you get there and to get better with it. Now, just to keep this in mind, this is something that took me years to get down on my own. So I don't want you to get frustrated if you don't get it right away. That's what the sync button's meant for. The sync button, right away, you hit that button and they, they snap together. Manual beat matching is an art. It is training your ears to be able to know how to adjust, when to adjust, how much to move the platter, right? All of those things come into play. So I wanna give you a couple of tips that will help you with this. So let's come on over to my whiteboard. Um, a couple of things. Number one, let's make sure that you have your headphones set up right. First of all, let's make sure that you're using headphones. Because when it comes to manual beat matching, if you're not using headphones and you're just listening to what's coming off the speaker, you are only going to know that it is off once everybody else can hear that it's off as well. So make sure that you're using headphones and make sure that you have one ear in and one ear out. So one ear in, one ear out. Very important. Okay, now, number two. When we are manual beat matching, it is very important that we are moving to the music. So you gotta be able to move to the music. Now, question for you. Are you moving to the song that you're listening to that's coming up, or are you moving to the song that is playing off the speaker that everybody else is moving to? Number two, right? You're moving to what everybody else is moving to. Your body is gonna be super crucial here in helping you, so move. And I'm actually gonna put an exclamation point on that, right? You're moving to the track that is playing off of the speaker. Very, very, very important. Okay, um, number three. When we are manual beat matching, we need to make sure that we always get back to the beginning of the sound. So this song is playing on the left deck. I am bringing my right one in, right? I'm only listening to that one too, by the way. That's, a, that's another one of my points, that's, the sec, that's number four, um, that you're only listening to your cue, the song that's coming in, right? But number three is that we are getting back to the very beginning of the track that we're coming in with, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm queued up to the one of the intro, the one of the very beginning of the track, and that as this song is playing that I'm lining up ones. I got to make sure that I get a nice clean drop on the ones so that the ones are lined up. Uh, sort of like if you were to watch a drag race, right, where two cars started off and they just started going, right? And if you didn't see the start line and you saw that one car was farther ahead than the other car, how do you know if they got a clean start? You don't. You're not sure. You need to be able to see the start. So if they've gotten a, the, a clean start in the beginning and now they go, now you can say, okay, this car that is ahead must be a faster car because they started at the same time. Does that make sense? If they started at the same time and 10 seconds into the race, one car is in front of the other car and they started at the same time, they must be going at different speeds. And that's how you know how to adjust. So one of the songs needs to be slowed down, right? All right, so um, clean start. 
So we've got a couple of tips here. We've got four tips already, four things to keep in mind. I know this is a lot. It's a lot to keep track of. Um, and like I told you, this, is, this took me years to really get down. But now that I've gotten it down, I know how to make adjustments. So let's keep going with this. Keep flushing this out. All right, so let's use that same, uh, let's use that same analogy of these two cars starting at the same time. So you start at the same time, one car is getting faster than the other. It is obvious then that the, this car is faster, this car is slower, right? So we know over time. In the beginning though, they're gonna look as though they are moving at the same speed and then one is gonna sort of pull away, right? So um, you've gotta let the song play long enough in your ear. So this one is playing, it's coming off the speaker, everybody's dancing to it, you're dancing to it, you're bringing in the new song and drop on the one. In that first like two seconds, you won't be able to tell if it's faster or slower. You won't be able to tell. You gotta let this play a little bit longer so you can tell whether or not it's on or if it's not on. So here we go and, and we're gonna bring this song in and mix in the headphones only. As this is happening, what are you listening for? It's another one of my tips. So here we go, number five. And I'm gonna give you a whole list of tips here. Number five, what are we listening for? All right, let's break this down. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna zoom in to my bar again. You remember this when we were talking about a bar? So this is one, two, three, four, right? Two, two, three, four. Let's talk about the drums. The one is probably a kick drum. The three, also a kick drum. The two and the four will likely be snares, right? So a kick versus a snare. Kick is a deeper sound, right? Kick snare kick snare one two three four this is a typical beat three four one two three four what do you think i am suggesting that you listen to kick or snare so let me give you this in context song is playing we're moving to it they're moving to it and drop on the one am i listening for the kick or the snare i always thought it was the kick I'm so wrong. I should be listening for the snare or the clap that's happening on the two and the four. The reason for that is this is a higher frequency sound. So it's easier to pick out. So here we go and drop, snare, snare. If those are lined up, we're good. But what happens if we're hearing this? And drop on the one and drop, snare, 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 right? This is hitting first in my ear. They're clearly off, right? If the snares aren't lined up, then the whole thing is off. So if I'm hearing snare, snare, this one is hitting first, and my ear is hitting first, which is telling me that the one in my ear is too fast. So I need to slow that down. Now, I used to think that there were two options. This is hitting too fast, this is hitting too slow. So maybe what I need to do is I need to speed up the song that's playing. Nope, we're not gonna touch the song that is playing. This is what everybody is moving to. Let's leave that alone. We're only worried about the song that's coming in. So again, if I'm hearing and drop, snare, 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 this is hitting first. It's too fast, it's hitting first. So we're gonna slow it down. Then when we slow it down, we're gonna bring it back to the very beginning and we're gonna try it again and get another clean drop. Okay, so we now slowed it down on our our tempo fader. We've slowed it down. And some of this might be a little bit of, of guessing. In fact, to, to give you another analogy, have you ever played the game like higher or lower? Like guess the number that's in my head, right? And from one to a hundred and you throw out, go ahead, guess. And you, you guess a number, you say 20 and say higher. You say, okay, uh, how about 40? You said lower. Okay, now you have an idea. It's somewhere between 20 and 40. So now you're taking another guess, uh, 30, higher. So now you're between 30 and 40, you're getting closer, right? 35, lower. Okay, so now I'm between 30 and 35. You get my point. The more times that you have guesses, the, the more likely you are to actually guess the right number. And that's sort of what we're doing with our manual beat matching when it comes to the tempo fader. I'm bringing the song in and drop this in, snare, snare. Snare, snare, oh, something is off. Let me move the, the fader. 
right, to, to be able to slow this down. Now let me bring this back to the very beginning of the song. Let's try this again and drop it again and drop. Now I'm hearing snare, snare, still slower, okay? So now, I've, or still faster. So now I gotta slow it down again, right? I'm getting closer and closer to that number, like that magic number that we're trying to find. Does this make sense? Okay, so that is figuring it out on the tempo side, but keep this in mind. I actually don't want to touch the tempo fader first. I want to use my hand first. I want to make a manual adjustment. What if I had already guessed the right number? What if the tempo fader was already in the right place, but maybe I was a little bit late? Or in this case, I was a little bit early. Maybe when I brought the song in, I got a little bit too early of a start. Imagine the two, the two cars are set to the exact same speed, same acceleration, same speed, but one starts faster. So it goes and start. Well, they're gonna stay off and the same distance off the entire time. What I need to do is nudge the other car ahead, right? I just need to kind of like push that ahead. This is what I like to call a minor adjustment. I'm pushing this ahead a little bit or pulling this back a little bit just to get it to line up. I'm not touching the tempo fader. I'm just using my manual adjustment on the platter to be able to fix this. Now, this is a really important skill to be able to learn and to be able to master because if you push it ahead too far, you're gonna go too far forward or, or too far back and you can always play with this. This is the part of the feel. This is the feel that we are talking about when it comes to DJing and manual beat matching. And this is the part that takes practice. So in my mind, I have somewhat of a chart which is saying, if the snares are this far apart, then move the record forward about this much. Right? Like I, there's this weird chart. Or if the snares are this far apart, then slow down the, um, slow down the platter this much. Right? Like I have that in my mind. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use my hand to be able to manually beat match, and this is a challenge. This is definitely a challenge, something to try, but hopefully these tips will help you out. So number five, I didn't finish this off, but number five, we're gonna listen for the kick or the snare? Snare. And we're gonna line that up. Now again, this takes practice. We also have things, for those of you who are using software, you've obviously got the BPM in the software. So you can look at the, at the BPM in the software to be able to get your tempo fader to be exactly where you want it. Uh, that's sort of like manual beat matching, but if you wanna be really focused on manual beat matching, don't even look at the screen. Don't even look at the screen, focus on your rig in front of you and, and really focus on what you're hearing versus what you're moving to. So I used to teach this. I used to teach that you are listening to two things at once, and that is not true. You are listening to the song that you're bringing in, and you're lining up what you're listening to to what your body is moving to. So you're listening to the song that's coming in, and what you hear, you're trying to line up with your hand and your ear, you're trying to line this up with your body. I honestly have a real hard time manual beat matching if I'm sitting down in a chair or if I'm on a stool. I need to be up, I need to be moving, I need to be dancing to what this is. And as I'm bringing this in, I'm making this adjustment, adjustment, adjustment. Bring this back to the top and try it again. And the more tries that I get, the closer that I'm going to get to getting them lined up. 